Well, I'm so excited to be here, and thank you for that warm introduction. Um, I'd actually like to ask, we have some of our committee members here today. We've got a table at the back as well. I'm not going to do a commercial break <laughs> quite uh, per se, but if you're part of Freedom, could you please stand up? Because these guys in the back are really the true Freedom Finders behind what we do. They have given many hours behind um, from initially before we've been founded to founding uh, to where we stand today. And unfortunately, we're not all here today. Uh, we do have a fantastic solid committee of about 15 to 17 people on our committee. And then we have about 150 volunteers overall. So we are a small core uh, committee group, but we have arms that stretch out quite wide with all of our volunteers. So we're excited to be here. I was actually here earlier this year in this very room, and uh, that's actually where we picked up one of our other committee members. So uh, thanks, Carly. <laughs> Lori's at the back, and she's a part of us now. Um, this is, if you go to freedom.ca, this is our website. And I just wanted to take a moment. We're talking um, about preventative measures, what can be done. And this whole day, I hope, has been as beneficial for you guys as it has been for myself and I know our committee at the back. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lot of stuff that hopefully you're writing down and learning in all different parts of the country. And what I'm going to talk to you shortly about in 15 minutes and do my best to stick to that is what can you do as one person sitting in this room to join in this freedom movement? Because many of you today um, are probably not going to start your own organization and nor do any of us sitting up here who have spoken before think or expect that you should. And so for you listening to all of this information, how do you digest it and then what can you do as, as one person? Um, because this issue is massive and we get very overwhelmed because it is massive and what can one person really do? And I'm here to tell you that you can do a lot. So um, we're gonna just briefly play, where's Alfredo? He's my wonderful tech man. Um, who, and actually the photos are just flipping through. We just had our second annual Freedom Walk in Toronto. And we had it at Oliver and Bonaccini on events down at Adelaide and Bay. And we actually shut down the streets of Toronto this year. So we were so excited. University was closed and Queen Street. And so it was pretty exciting. So those are some of the photos that were just from that event. Um, before you press, press play, I'm just going to set the stage a bit for this. This is one of the creative things which I'm going to get into of what you can do. Uh, we are newly founded, which also means we don't have a lot of funding or money. So we really get creative behind what we do and talking to people to get them to sponsor certain things. This was the PSA, which stands for Public Service Announcement, that we put together. We were part of Toronto Fashion Alternative Week and it stands for FAT in Toronto. And so we decided to create, we wanted to be a part of this artistic scene, but obviously we were gonna have, not that booths and tables are cheesy because they're informative and you need them, but at a fashion show, not really the best fit. And so we decided to come up with something that was gonna be a bit more creative. And so we created this film, this short film for that. And we also had art installations. And so we actually had live people um, that, from first glance, you would have no clue that it was human trafficking. And as you came closer and started to ask questions and think about it, it was mirroring uh, situations of human trafficking that we had at this art show. So it was pretty cool. So this was presented on the runway uh, to about over 2,000 people. And overall in the week, there was over 5,000 attendees that came through. So pretty powerful in just one smaller way where you can reach a mass amount of people to just raise up this issue. So go ahead, press play. Yep. I know a secret. Do you want to hear the secret? The world's 27 million darkest secrets. There are more people today in slavery than ever before in history. Slavery is suffering, domination, bondage, control. Human trafficking is slavery today. 
There are 27 million people in slavery today. It's a $32 billion industry. Greater than the profits of Nike, Google, and Starbucks combined. 70% of those trafficked are for the purpose of sexual exploitation. 80% are women and children. Every 60 seconds, two children are trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Sex trafficking is happening in our own backyards. Human trafficking has to stop. Will you join the freedom movement? Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world. It's the only thing that ever has. Will you join us for freedom? Perfect. The end of that was, will you join us for freedom's sake? I've been told that sometimes you can't read the words at the very end, so I'm just going to repeat those for you. But while you watch that video, three more children have been trafficked. Um, every 60 seconds, two children are trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation. So those were the words on the end. So there are more people in slavery today than ever before in history. And every time I say that sentence, and I ask you to just slow down in your mind, um, if you're thinking about when I'm going to be finished speaking, and if you can go to the bathroom or whatever it is, if you listen to one thing, have this in your brain. There are more people today in slavery than ever before in history. It blows my mind away every time I hear it, because that's the truth and it's the reality behind that. And yet, how is our world not aware of that? And David, who came up here earlier, I'm glad he brought it up from Stow Change, he had said, you know, we have this idea that slavery doesn't exist anymore. We've greatly used a fantastic word called abolished, and it's been embedded into our North American Western culture and all over the world, really. And there are countries, including our own, that you guys have heard about that are, are living in great slavery today, and yet we're not, we're not aware of it. And so one of the tactics that we use is when I talk about human trafficking, and I thank you when you introduced me for actually saying, i.e., it's slavery today, is that if you're talking about human trafficking, please say it's slavery today. Because that wakes people up to saying, whoa, there's this, how, what do you mean slavery? How is it going on? Where is it going on? And it introduces a whole other conversation. And so you'll hear if you're in this um, if you're in this industry of fighting human trafficking, you'll hear a phrase that's often used saying, help us re-abolish slavery. And unfortunately, myself personally, I, I just don't think it's a correct term to be using because it was never really obtained. Slavery is, was made illegal and we have um, protection acts around that, that it is no longer legal to do. Yet when you look around today, there are more people in slavery than ever before in history. So we're still fighting and we're still dreaming and we're hoping and pushing for that abolition and for the abolishment of slavery today. So when we, I had, and my whole story is very long and I'm happy to address it on the panel. If you guys have questions or afterwards, I'll be here. But part of our heartbeat behind Free Them was that we want to be a voice in any capacity that we can. We want to raise that awareness because like you all know, if you don't know something exists, you can't fight it. So you need to raise that awareness first. It's the first step that you have to do. And so behind what we do in partnering is we say we're going to raise the voice, we're going to um, go out there, do these events and whatnot, and we're going to partner with the best of the best to be able to actually help fund different units, to help fund vice units, to help fund uh, NGOs that are rescuing and rehabilitating these women and children and young boys um, out of lives of slavery. And so today, I'm going to kind of give you more practical things to do. Um, and what we do at Free Them is three things I would say we do fairly well. One is creating the action. Two is create the involvement. And three is allow for creativity. 
And part of creating that action is like you're sitting here today, is you hear all of this stuff and then you don't know what to do with it. And so we give you tangible ways um, from creating your own fundraisers and we give you the tools and whatnot to be able to actually go into your schools or churches or hosting um, screenings at your own home. It doesn't need to be in large masses, but we'll help you give you the tools to be able to do that. The other one is creating the involvement. So many people think that because you are one person that you're not going to be able to, to make a difference or you don't even know where to start. And part of, of wanting to be involved is that you have your own ideas into how you think that you could fight slavery. And so we encourage that creativity and we want to raise up the next generations because they're ultimately going to be the ones that are running with the torch. And so we want youth to be stoked on what they're stoked about. And so we want them to be passionate about fighting this. And how do you do that is by encouraging them to dream and to come up with their own ideas. And we have articles actually at our table of two boys um, in a high school. I speak at many different high schools and universities and that sort of thing. And they decided to give up their birthday this year, two boys, 16 years old, that were turning 17, to sacrifice their birthday presents to raise money for human trafficking for victims in Halton and Peel in Toronto. And these two boys came into my office, and long story short, they filled their high school with uh, about 400 people, and P. Terrence Young came out as well. And we had a fantastic, fantastic evening, and these boys raised $6,000 for free them to fight human trafficking. Yeah, and these are, these are just two boys, and they're no different than any other 16-year-old out there. But when you instill that creativity and that um, freedom into our youth, and you give them those tools to coach them, they raise $6,000 and they're protecting, we're pouring that into our safe houses uh, that we have in this, in the GTA area. And many women and children are going to um, be liberated because of that. So that's, that is one area of what we're doing. I'm going to save eight things because I already got my five minute sign that they want me to get off the podium. I'm going to say eight things that you can do. And if you would like me to expand that on the panel in a question, I'll do that for you. Um, Eight easy ways to create awareness and educating. One, through launching different campaigns. Two, public events and fundraising. Um, three, media attention. Four, social media outlets. Five, promotional materials, such as our t-shirts. We've got Freedom Bands, which you're all welcome to have one for free at the back. Please see us and, and we'll give you one of those. Um, writing to your MPs and MPPs and the Prime Minister, we make that easy for you when you go onto our website and hit download. It's already templated. Just print it off and sign it and send it to your MP. Speaking engagements um, and different educational pieces. And this doesn't have to be that you have to come up here and speak to a group like yourself. It can literally mean saying, hey, on a Friday night, invite 10 of your friends over and we've got DVDs at the back. Get one of those DVDs, show it to them, and then talk about human trafficking afterwards and how you can get your communities involved, be it in your church groups, um, different faith communities, in your high schools or universities, at your businesses. There's many ways that you can, starting off small with knowing a few pieces of information. You don't have to know everything. You don't need to be an expert. And I'll be the first to say, I have so much learning I'm still doing on this. So you just need to know a few things to start spreading that awareness. And then the eighth thing that is really super important is partnering. Uh, and knowing that you, you don't need to reinvent the wheel and losing your ego and not having to do it all. And really allowing other people, partnering with people who are already doing it, fantastic. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you one for social media, um, which is very easy for you all to do, because if you're not on Facebook, I'm not sure what century you're living in. If, you, if you're not on Twitter, I don't blame you. Took me a while to get on Twitter, but I'm gonna just briefly, because um, I've only got about a minute left, tell you the power of social media in our society today. And so you can follow us on Twitter, you can take all of our stuff and retweet it, you don't need to come up with your own stuff even. But we, in less than four months, and I've got a fantastic Twitter guru at the back for Freedom, but he managed to increase our viewers over, we, we were at, I don't know, 200 or 300, whatever it was, and in less than four months, we had over 600 people. And when you start tapping into that world, not only we've received volunteers through that, we've received a new graphic designer through Twitter, we've received, uh, and she's actually at the back earlier today, we've got new students that now want to speak and have us come out to their high schools. 
we've got celebrity status. We have Ashley Judd that tweets about our freedom walk that we did in Toronto. They heard about you speaking in the House of Commons and she congratulated freedom on, on those accomplishments to people like Eric Belfer, Shay Mitchell, who's a Canadian actress, I believe, right? So you start tapping into these resources and you start seeing it's so simple and that's free. You can just sign up and all you have to do is one, pick one sentence you learned from here today and put it on Facebook and you'll start to see the conversations that are having being had because you just put one sentence on there. So whether it's from me or it could have been from Carly or MP Terrence Young when he spoke or some of the people earlier, I encourage you guys today before you go to bed, post something on Facebook, put something out on Twitter and start seeing how just that effect begins to move forward and spreading that awareness. Because if you don't know about it, you can't fight it. So I'm going to leave that before he comes up on stage and takes me off on stage. Thank you guys. <laughs>